Hey everybody, welcome back again to the AD&D 2nd Edition channel. I've got some pickups here, nothing uh, too crazy in the amount, but at the same time I want to show you this just because I have a few miniatures here that I really would like uh, to get rebased and started off. So I wanted to make a video here and get that out of the way so I can get started on what I'm going to show you. But first, I'm going to show you some books that I picked up. Now this is not an edition of D&D &D that I play, but still, I mean, it's cool what I got. So check it out. I got the third edition player's handbook and this cost uh, $4, which is really nice. And I also got a second copy of the player's handbook with this one here is a little bit special uh, because it has the character generator disc still in it, which the other one does not. So that's pretty cool. And they are in pretty excellent condition. Moving on from that, I got the second uh, Cora rule book at the same time, same price, $4 uh, for um, the Dungeon Master Guide. So really cool. Like I said, I don't play this edition, but to get the core books is pretty neat. And to round it all out, I did pick up also the Monster Manual, which is the third Cora rule book of the set. So I figured, you know what, if I can get all the three, um, you know, uh, three books for the core rule book set, why not? And basically what I did was I bought these uh, four books and I also bought a fifth book because at the store I got it from, which is uh, Talese, if you buy uh, four books, you get the fifth one free. So I basically did that. So I got a fifth book and uh, it wasn't anything to do with Dungeons and Dragons. I just bought it and uh, used it in my classroom. But uh, that this here um, was the four books that I got. So it's pretty good. And I got a dollar off because I had enough points. So it was kind of a really good deal. I think I ended up paying somewhere in around $15 for like four books. So not too bad. And that was like taxes and everything. So that's pretty sweet. Um, moving on from that though, I've got a couple minis here or a few minis rather that I'm going to show you right about now. Okay. So the four minis I'm about to show you here are all hero click type minis and they seem to come from the Lord of the Rings series, which fits in perfectly nice with Dungeons and Dragons. So the first one you're looking at here is Herodrim. And I kind of like this one. I think there's a lot of details on this one that they just missed out on when they painted them. So I'm looking forward to stripping this guy down, uh, you know, probably with acetone or maybe I'll try the LA's Totally Awesome and get that paint off them, prime them up and do them right kind of thing and make sure that, um, you know, I rebase and everything like that on this particular model. But I think that's going to be pretty sweet. Can never have really enough archers and it's really kind of cool. Like the size of that arrow is pretty epic. And as far as the dress and the outfit goes that's on them, it's kind of strange the way they did it with the uh, sort of black and then the red on the back. So I don't know if I'll switch that up and just sort of make it one color. I think that's a little bit odd, but again, I'm going to use it for D&D, so it doesn't necessarily need to reflect Lord of the Rings, and that's a good thing for me. And the second model that we're taking a look at here is Pippin, and I think that's really going to be great. I mean, that's just like a perfect size for you know, a halfling uh, for D&D. &D. So what do you, what can you say about that? Again, there's a lot of details here that they're missing out on that I think are on these. And if you ever notice that with hero clicks, there's a lot of details that they just kind of painted right over. I don't understand why they would create a model and then, you know, not fill in the details, but uh, that they created in that model. But again, you know, uh, fine by me because I'm going to end up taking him off of this base and putting him onto a new one. So pretty happy with that. The next one that we're taking a look at here is an Urukai Archer. And again, the same kind of things happened here where they've just missed out on tons and tons and tons of detail uh, that's on this model. There are so many folds, ridges, like just there's, you know, everything on here. You can see so much detail and yet they just painted it in two colors, basically with one little splotch of silver on the belt. And I think that's a real missed opportunity there, but I'm definitely gonna rectify that situation by painting this one up properly and doing it justice and making sure that, um, you know, it gets used for D&D. &D. And the fourth and final mini that I'm showing you here, again, that are hero clicks, obviously, is uh, Grimma Worm Tongue. So really cool right here. I like this sculpt. It's like a little chunkier and wider in the, in the, the way that it is just because it doesn't doesn't really show like his legs just has like a really long robe and i don't know if i have any characters that necessarily show um you know a wizard like that and i'd probably dress him up 
as a wizard. He's got, uh, again, a few more colors, I think, than the last one that I showed you here, but he really needs a paint job. Like his face is really muddy in this, but the detail in that robe is phenomenal and something that you could definitely uh, play around with and pull out those details. It's gonna be really wonderful model to add to the collection. All right, so that's everything I got for you this time around. Thanks again for watching. If you have not subscribed yet, please do feel free to thumbs up this video, comment down below, and I'll see you all later.